photos of a pale, dark-haired girl are distorted in various ways. The distortions fade to reveal the girl at different ages. Grinning, she wears a pile of colourful hats. I have really, really understood the difference between acceptance and tolerance. Her hair drawn into a tight bun, she stands smiling at a large group of trophies. Wearing a simple tiara, she holds a ballet pose. I'm so sick of justifying why I deserve to be somewhere. Dark, concentric rings divide a young woman's pale face. The circles slide into place and close, smoothing her freckled profile. Blocks form into a photo of a girl eating a sandwich using chopsticks. How many people with disabilities have been completely ignored? Title Perspective Shift. A line expands under the name Yana Castillo. The tall, slender Yana dances in a studio. Reflected in a wall mirror, she swings a leg up, then sinks into a crouch, her arms moving sinuously. Spinning, she tosses her long, dark, wavy locks. The torso horizontal, she twirls with one leg high. When I dance, it feels like I'm both nothing and, and everything. And the way it comes together is sort of a real life magic. And it's just always been like that since I was tiny. Kneeling, Yana rotates her torso, arching it back, then sweeping it low across the floor. She dances athletically, throwing herself into spins, lunges, and twists. So Yana, I've known for quite a long time now, um, since she was a student. Her as a dancer, for me, she's really exciting. She is fearless. She is absolutely powerful, yet she has this beautiful subtlety about her as well. Yana dances robotically, but fluidly. She has an ability to be quite um, asynchronous, which is sometimes really delightful for a choreographer to be able to work with someone that can naturally take their body into a kind of an interesting, discoordinated place. I believe Yana is probably one of Australia's best or top female dancers at the moment. A man smiles from a sepia photo. Dancing at home, Yana flicks her skirt. I grew up with Spanish heritage. My yayo was in the Spanish Civil War, and he walked across the French Alps and escaped Spain. I remember dancing around in the lounge room. He was clapping, as flamenco dancers do, and kind of cheering me on. He had such a passion for life and, and such a zest for emotion and movement. An elderly man sits by a piano. He was on his deathbed when he held my little brother's hand and he said, now you make sure you look after your mum and you be a good boy. And he held on to my sister's hand and said, you be a good girl, you know, get, go to uni and get a good job. And then he came to me and he said, just put the Castillo name up in lights, you know, do what you, do what you love and, and share what you love. And, and that was literally the last thing he ever said to me. Her parents, Vret and Janine Castillo, smile from old photos. Mum and Dad actually grew up in the same town but they didn't actually meet until they moved to Melbourne. He rang me up and invited me out on a date, and we, we went, went bowling. bowling. Mm, ten pin yeah. bowling. We kissed goodnight, and I just knew that he was the right person. <laughs> and we've been together ever since. It's going to be 40 years next month. Photos show their wedding and a date. Mum always knew that she wanted to be a mum, and Dad knew then that he had a very low chance of having kids. Didn't phase Mum. She was like, OK, well, you're the fella for me, so we're going to have kids. The doctors suggested we try IVF. They did a blood test and they said, oh, you know, it was pretty high hormone levels. They said, oh, let's go send you for an ultrasound. And they saw two little embryos. And we were really excited. <laughs> we thought, oh, we've waited all this time. Now we've got two to make up for our weight. <laughs> I don't know that I actually really did prepare for twins, but I still remember sitting on the lounge room floor one day and thinking to myself, imagine how easy it would be with just one. <laughs> <laughs> Yana and a brown-haired woman laugh in an outdoor cafe. My relationship with Lauren has always been quite special. I don't think I would be who I am without her. Lauren Castillo, Yana's twin sister. Living with Yana, there was always a spontaneous theatre show. Like if we were walking down the street and there was a busker um, playing some music, then Yana would often jump in and start being part of the entertainment. She entertained us all the time. <laughs> right from when she was a baby, the way that her face lit up, it just captured people's attention. 
and that is something that a performer does. Little Yana has curly blonde hair. I just remember holding her and she gave me this big grin and I just, I remember saying out loud, oh, you're going to be on stage one day, kiddo. Mum would always say that I never, I never stopped moving. I came feet first out into the world and I've been dancing ever since. In play school, Benita entwines her fingers. I first knew that I wanted to be on stage when I was two and a half and we were at a live play school show, which is an iconic children's show in Australia. Hello. Has anyone ever played this with you before? And Benita was up there on stage. I was looking up and I saw them performing and then I remember looking around the audience and how engaged everyone was and how everyone was having such a good time. You know, people were clapping and smiling and everyone was really involved. And I just, from there on, I just went, I have to do that. I didn't fit the 90s school system at all. Mum was amazing. She says, you have to make it work for you. You have to understand it. And if you have to do something differently to get the same goal, that's okay. And she was really supportive in that way. It's because she just had all this energy all the time and she didn't know how to direct it. And it wasn't until she started dancing that she started really being able to direct that energy in a positive way. My Yaya, she would record all of these old ballets on VHS. And when we went and stayed with her, she would play them. So I followed along and, you know, copied every moment, like, spot on to my four-year-old brain until we went up to this kind of ponche moment, which is where you stand on one leg and the other one's kind of in the splits. So I went up and I went, as I went to go down, I fell over and I just got up and I, I remember so clearly thinking, oh, well, I need to go to lessons. A pile of ballet shoes. So these are my just little ballet shoes. So this would have been when I was about 11. But I remember, I remember my first point shoes and going up on point and I loved it. That one's pretty gross. I used to go get a hole all the way through. So it wears down because it's paper mache. She sticks a finger through the toe. I remember the very first day of my ballet class. I remember, I remember the exercises we did. I remember the music. I remember my teacher. Um, and I just felt at home. I loved ballet because I wanted to be a male ballet dancer. And I, I wanted to fly like them. I wanted to jump and turn like them. I wanted to do princely roles, you know, and pick the ballet girls up, you know, above my head and twirl them around. <laughs> Yana rests one hand on a ballet bar as she gracefully swings her leg. I remember we were at this wedding and we were on the dance floor and I was dancing with, with the flower girl and she was so pretty and I was twirling her all around and, um, and we were having such a great time. And we were five, you know, so we were having a really good time. But an adult came over and said, you two shouldn't be dancing like that together and, and literally dragged this girl away. And I remember going, oh, OK, oh, that's bad, all right. And that, yeah, it was a really kind of bizarre experience. At her home, a table is covered with a forest of trophies. Yana looks through a pile of medals. We've got a couple of my medals and trophies here. I think this is the first trophy I ever won. That was lovely. I then started like the Aubrey Steadford and things like that. Lauren. The local Aubrey Steadford, Yana had already reached the top of that competition. Home video shows Yana dancing. I ended up doing very well in, in those regional kind of competitions. Janine. And by the time she was 16, she was in 30 items at the Estedford. I remember when we were 17, we did a tour around the country and we, we went to all of the different Estedfords. A lot of running around, trying to fit in. Yana doing her private lessons and her regular dance lessons. I was doing 500 kilometres a week when the girls were in year 11, driving kids around. And Wodonga's not that big. Yeah, and it's only in a small <laughs> town. <laughs> a colourful hooded jumpsuit. And I made this costume and painted it and everything. And so Yana wore that and did her first part of the dance as a, 
like a stick insect. Yeah. And then she craw crawled into here. Whilst doing choreography, yeah. while making it look super amazing, I had to undo myself, yeah. right? Which was... And then hook my little... Thing, finger into finger there. Finger into here and blast apart. So when she came out, she was a butterfly. The jumpsuit now has a purple bodice and flowing wings. At 16, I auditioned for VCAS, which is Victorian College of the Arts Secondary School. So they both combine full-time training and your VCE, which is your high school certificate. It meant that I was moving to Melbourne. It meant that I could dance full-time. It meant that I could also do my studies. It was really exciting. I'd found these other people who love to dance as much as I do, although I wanted to be a classical dancer at that time. I also loved other styles. VCAS really offered a huge variety for such a young person. Jana dynamically swings her torso, then leaps. At the end of year 12, I auditioned for quite a number of different institutions all over Australia and New Zealand, and I ended up picking New Zealand School of Dance. Text, Craig Barry, dance choreographer. Yeah, New Zealand School of Dance is probably one of, if not the best, dance schools in the Southern Hemisphere. And I think most of the artists that come from there are really prominent in the industry right now. It's a really exciting place to be. So I moved to New Zealand. On a dark stage, male dancers perform in grey dresses. Ultimately, what I wanted when I graduated was full-time work. I always wanted to work with ADT. You know, they're a, an internationally touring company and it's a full-time gig, you know, it's, it's pretty special. You know, it's something that I really did aspire to. Text Gary Stewart, Artistic Director, Australian Dance Theatre. Australian Dance Theatre is a very significant Australian company. It has a 54-year history. It's contributed a lot to Australian culture and how uh, we understand Australian dance both uh, nationally and also internationally many young dancers. It remains their hope to be a member of Australian Dance Theatre and their aspirations, so we attract dancers auditioning from all around the world. Dancers rehearse in a studio. A lot of dancers do things called secondments, and they can do that throughout their training, and they can also do that after they've graduated. So it's really just a time, it's kind of like an internship, and I seconded with ADT, and you know, I really loved the movement, it was really athletic, it was really exciting, and I guess I had secretly hoped, oh, maybe if I do those secondments, I'll be seen. And... Well, it's very difficult for dancers to get a position in any full-time company. It's a highly, highly competitive industry, and you know, often we go to see a show and there's someone we can't take our eyes off. Well, I want a whole company of those kind of people, soloists, you know, entities within their own right that have their own agency and power and personality and, and bring that to bear in the work. Although I loved seconding with ADT, you know, at the time there, there was no placements available or there was no interest. I really believed that that would be a perfect place for her to go at that time. When she called me and said that nothing really had come of it, I was really surprised. In front of the wall mirror, Jana crouches and lunges fluidly, her arms snaking gracefully. I was working in the industry and I'd been out a few years by then. Um, I was freelancing, so I was, you know, going from job to job, doing all sorts of, all sorts of things. Uh, I went back home straight after I'd finished this show in, in Fiji. And usually it takes about a week to kind of recover from a show. You know, you, you can feel a bit, a bit down and it's just after show blues, it's not a big deal. I just felt like, you know, something wasn't right and I was losing my balance and this is when I lost control of my body for the first time. You know, so I was taken to hospital and they said, right, we'll run a bunch of tests. It then went under the umbrella of a functional movement disorder or a functional neurological disorder. So I'd started ticking, you know, I'd started, you know, making sounds and, you know, noticing my hands were coiling up and, you know, I was having problems walking around and... Text, Yana's video diaries. Shoulders hunched, Yana walks carefully. She then dances, swooping and spinning dynamically. I feel a disconnect. I feel like I'm in my body, but I feel like my nerves get strangled. When I do that, it takes some focus, so it builds up more. I don't 
you knew why then. I will try again. She leaps and spins, kicking her legs high. I even feel like it's weird that I can dance in sometimes and then I slow down. I had 12 weeks at home with mum and dad and I remember um, the producer of Happy's Larry called me up and said, oh, you know, are you able to do this big Australian tour? So I said, you know, I have had some health issues, but, you know, there's no reason why I can't dance. So one of the reasons I did feel safe enough to do the Happy's Larry Australian tour is because um, Craig, who I had known for many years by then, he was on as rehearsal director. So there was a lot of negotiating with the other dancers, with her, making sure that everybody was comfortable just getting out on that stage and performing. They didn't make me feel like I was different or weird or odd. And they would even do things, you know, particularly Craig would do things, like if I, one of my ticks is seven, you know, so I yell out seven. And in dancing, that's a really frustrating thing because you were always counting to eight. So yeah, so she would scream out seven and I would have to scream out eight, just to finish it off, round it off. And I think making light of, of it with her, kind of, I will I hope, made her and the other dancers feel a bit more comfortable. Certain work environments will say that they are all inclusive, but they tolerate you, they don't accept you. And that's huge, that's huge, because you can tell the difference. I felt like if I was a bit ticky or a bit dystonic, I had to apologise. You know, I had to remove myself from situations. In the cafe, Jana and Lauren paint elaborate designs. Lauren has some little portable paints and some little paint brushes. One of the things that we really love to do is just go to a cafe, just sit there and paint and drink coffee. And particularly when I'm dystonic and things like that, we'll have the waitress come up and, and just talk with Lauren and say, oh, what would you ladies like? Um, and completely ignore that I'm even there. I understand that people are uncomfortable and I can tell when people are scared. And sometimes the way people deal with being scared is they ignore you. And that sucks. Cut to black. Craig Barry sits on a wooden veranda. So I was commissioned to create a show in New Zealand and I absolutely wanted Jana to be a part of that process. I chose her and seven other artists to create a show which I called Straight Laced. And the real context of the show was I wanted to work with people of different sexual orientation. I then found myself in a love story with another woman. And that was really confronting because I went, oh my gosh, people in the audience might think that I'm a lesbian. Kind of had all these connotations that I didn't want to be attached to and I just wanted to live my life and keep dancing. It, yeah, um, it wasn't a big part of my identity. It was just something that I, I just happened to like women. I think for Jana coming on board for Straight Laced, I think she was at a point in her life where maybe she was ready to start discussing or acknowledging her own sexual identity. We were chatting about the show one night and I just got really frustrated and I said, you know, like, I, I just, I was like, Craig, I just don't want to be gay. It's this, I just don't want to be gay. And I can be quite blunt and I'm pretty sure I told her that she is who she is and let's just get over it and move forward in some direct term. <laughs> I was on tour in New Zealand with Okereka, which is a wonderful dance company over there. On her hands and feet, Jana hovers over a dancer. My friend called me up and she said, oh, ADT's having an audition, will you be coming? You know, and I just thought, if I was gonna be working at ADT, it would have happened by now, so. And I went to the audition and I had a ball. In the audition, I asked her to uh, do a particular sequence from this work, Be Yourself, and uh, what she made out of that was really, really something and then really drew my attention. Jana walks robotically in a complex series of tiny motions. 
And then the other thing was her uh, charisma and particularly her dramatic and emotional range. And then I think a few weeks later, Gary called me up and he said, oh, hi, Yana, just wondering if you'd like a, a year contract with the company. So I accepted the job and packed up everything and moved over to Adelaide. Rehearsal and performance are intercut. It's a funny thing to actually look at the fact that I'm living the dream that I had when I was seven. Yana dances in a trio. There's no denying that when I first joined the company, it was really hard. It's an intense company, no matter what. Yana dodges a dancer's questing hands. At the time, I was hell-bent on, on hiding my movement disorder. I didn't want anyone to know. Not many people in the dance industry knew at the time um, the extent of what she was going through. Performing off the record was the first time that I allowed anyone outside my friends and family to see that I had a movement disorder. The character is me. It's my life out there. I told some pretty personal stories. And it was a really amazing production to tell Yana's story in a way that was very cathartic for her and the rest of the family. People don't know a lot about different types of movement disorders, because there are so many. It's usually I get all my ticking done off side stage. And I ended up being on stage the whole time, so I couldn't, I couldn't get rid of my ticks, I just had to do them. So that was a very different kind of experience for me. At rehearsals, Yana rolls her back against a foam cylinder. I think one of the greatest things that ADT has done with me is actually sit down and write a management plan. Gary Stewart sits on a stage. So it was actually our executive director that suggested uh, we need a, a management plan. Rather than just kind of pretending as though, you know, nothing's happening, it's, it's sort of better just to have an open discourse and open dialogue about that. I think that's, that's a much healthier approach. My friends with ADT have named certain types of ticking. They call her Mary Lou because she, she loves ballet. Yeah! And yeah, wow! <laughs> So they all know when she's coming on because they start getting really excited about something. And, and then there's creepy Kevin and he whispers and I don't, you know, kind of says seven. And... The dancer aims a drill at Yana. She reacts to its movements like a puppet. Yana and two others dance with planks. They perform a stylized beating. Construct is a piece that was created by Tanya Leckie. And tragically, she passed away when she was 29 the 10th anniversary of her passing, Australian Dance Theatre put on the piece Construct. Construct is still a very timely work. Even after 10 years, it's still set inside social, political climates. Yana was probably cast in Christina's role because of the extreme physicality that you requires for you to be able to do that role. Yana performs acrobatically. Christina Chan is a phenomenal performer and artist. Um, I would hate, personally, to try and stand in her shoes, but gosh, if anybody can, Yana really could. She really stepped into that, that role. Yana and a man dance near a fence and a sawhorse. You know, I think the thing that we really saw on stage with Yana, uh, with that work, was just this kind of really supreme ability to express these ideas through the constraints and, uh, and strictures of the choreographic narrative. They roll and spin across the stage. Her parents are interviewed. I did feel like it was really special. I really felt like she was at the top of her game. And I remember thinking, she's done it, she's done it. She's, she's doing what she loves. It's her career, it's her life, um, and she still enjoys doing it what she does. The three dancers bow. And I found out that I was longlisted for the uh, Australian Dance Awards um, for my role in Construct. You know, you do put blood, sweat and tears into, into your work, so it is nice to be recognised by your peers. I think we all look to the Australian Dance Awards for a little bit of, uh, you know, a bit of an indication of where you sit within the community. And then I received an email that I had been shortlisted. And 
that was actually really quite amazing. That I just felt like I am doing it. I'm doing this job. We were just um, really excited and said, well, we, we're definitely going to the awards night. And Yana said, oh, but I probably won't win. And we said, doesn't it doesn't matter. matter. We're just really proud of you for getting the, to the top four, you know? That's an achievement in itself. You know, that's really special and we want to be there. Most outstanding performance by a female dancer came up and they went through the different nominees and I was getting ready to do like a big clap and, and then they said my name and I was like, what? And I looked at Lauren and she's like, get up, get up. So exciting. Uh, I think I just went into shock. I looked over and Brett's got tears running out of his face and the guy next to him says, is that your daughter? He says, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little bit emotional at the time. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I went up there and I you know, kind of said, like, oh, I'm stoked and I've been blessed with this opportunity to be performing this amazing role. And I thanked my family who were right in the front row. It was a really special moment for the family. In a photo, the smiling Castillo's pose with Yana's trophy fade to black. In the studio, Yana dances, leaping and swinging her legs and torso. I don't necessarily have to be a professional dancer all my life, but I know that it's never gonna leave me and I think I'll always be an entertainer. Yana jumps, throwing her legs out. She spins, then undulates her hips and torso. I love performing in massive opera houses and I love performing in intimate little spaces. And I like just dancing with Laura and just the two of us. The twins dance in a lounge room. It's infectious, like when you watch her dance, can't help but like make you smile because you can see how much she loves it in every, like every cell, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dark hair flying, Yana dips and twists her torso, twirls on one leg, then rolls across the floor. You know, like way back when I was two and a half, like in a way, I always just wanted to be like Benita and, and influencing people in a, in a positive way. And I guess I have that in the back of my mind every time I go onto a show. Yana rehearses, her head down, she wipes her brow and exhales. Yeah, it doesn't matter if I'm tired, it's not about me, it's, it's about the audience and it's about the gift of sharing something that's really special and in that moment, you know, and then I love it. Yana smiles, cut to black. Credits Attitude Foundation presents a Taste Creative production. Producers Leah James, Brianna Miller. Executive producers Sally Browning, SPA Henry Smith. Series writer and director Genevieve Clay Smith. Editor Josh Searle. Directed by Genevieve Clay Smith. Audio description by The Substation. Filmed on location in Victoria, South Australia and New South Wales, on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri, Wiradjuri, Wavaru, Dudaroa, Ghana and Karingai people. The logos for Victoria Australia ANZ inclusively made Taste Creative Attitude Foundation. Copyright 2019 Taste Creative Proprietary Limited.